I could have quite easily been that person if I hadn't had my old man to, to yeah, steer me in a good direction. It's a git. <laughs> This was my world champs frame from 2017. It was from back when the best mate was on the team with us. Um, he's a bit dim, old Will. My mate Jim, his mum still irons his fucking underwear. The actual prize money, yeah, that was, Jesus, that was 2011, yeah. Oh, it's cracking. So we'll break that out next week when we go testing in Italy. And then there's just number boards everywhere. I've had to travel a long way to get my one boards though. There's China and Germany on there. <laughs> This is my life on this board. Everything I do training wise goes on that board. Rowing machine, strength stuff. Um, most of it, if not all of it, governed by what Johnny tells me to do. As you can see from board, average five times a week. Obviously in the summer it's maybe, if I'm here it's maybe two, three times a week and then I'll ride, ride the trail bike more in the summer. Oh yeah, we're never gonna run out of cliff bars in this place. My dad steals them when he's working on the van. Get the sun. There's not many fathers and sons that remain as sort of interlinked and as closely working together as, as we have. Oh, 100%, loves being busy and as much as he'll tell people I'm a pain in the ass and um, I've got him working and he's a slave and no, he, he loves it. It's, uh, yeah, we're, we're a team basically, so. He's always there if I need him. He's, he's now, you know, on a van conversion that he was given a deadline for and it's almost an impossible deadline, but it looks like he's going to meet it. Like, literally anything I ever ask of him, he, he's there for. So, couldn't have got as far without him. Well, we've always encouraged him, but it's always been his decision. And uh, <laughs> there didn't need to be any pressure from us. The pressure came from him. We, we just tried, both of us, trying to just support him as much as we could. Our motto has always been, we're doing this because we enjoy it. Uh, and if you stop enjoying it, then don't do it. His work ethic was very, very good. I remember when he was, I think he was doing his A-levels and we had a race at Hlangolho. And he'd go up and do half a dozen runs and then he'd go at the end of the field with his books and do an hour and a half of work and then come back and then do some more runs. There wasn't really any kind of anything at school keeping me on my studies. It was my parents who were like, you will get these grades or you, we won't support you with the other things you want to do, which is, in my opinion, the best way to parent. Too many kids are just allowed to do whatever they want to do. They think they own the planet. And I could have quite easily been that person if I hadn't had my old man to, to yeah, steer me in a good direction. I've never known Jack not want to train. It's incredible. It's, he, he just enjoys it. I used to enjoy, I used to train, train, train. So he's obviously seen me do various things as, as he's been growing up. And I don't think he has to force himself to train. I think he's very lucky. I've, I guess I've just always seen my dad has been a super active guy and he's always, he's, when we were back in the football days, my dad was never one of them football dads. Like there'd be dads on the sidelines screaming at, at their kids. And my dad was never like that. Like. He'd just stand and watch and be my dad and then we'd always train during the week and we'd go and spend hours, like I'm both footed football, my left is as good as my right because of my dad. Because he instilled in me when I was a kid that if you want to make it, something that will ma massively help is being both footed. So he's always had that attention to detail in terms of being a coach. Um, by the time I started biking and his, because mountain biking downhill especially is such a niche sport, like when we started his knowledge of mountain biking was the same as mine and then obviously I've raced. So in terms of coaching me on a down on mountain bike, that hasn't been a thing, but all the coaching he's done for me in the past has taught me how to coach myself, essentially. I work so hard for my racing and I don't really know when I developed this inability to not be busy but like last night me and Sarah were watching TV and at like quarter past eight I was like no 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 I need to do something like I'm wasting my time so I came in here and tidied the workshop and finished off a few bits on the bike and and I wasn't like that at college I was quite happy to just sit back and do nothing for a while um, so whether it was while I was at uni and combining World Cup racing with getting my masters 
I don't know. But at some point during that journey of doing it all, I've just become addicted to whatever I'm doing. It gets 100% of my focus and my concentration. And I think that's what's managed to keep me racing and keep me climbing the ladder as racing's got harder while having a real job because I just, I just work real hard at it. It's hard work and it doesn't come easy. You know, you've got to have the natural ability, but you've got to also work damn hard at it. Yeah, I think coming through when there's a lot of good UK riders, really good UK riders that were good on the world scene, and then Jack coming through after his year in Canada, obviously riding the whole summer and got him quick. Um, and I think that sort of desire to beat these top guys and get up with, their, with these top guys was, was a driving force, and he wanted, to, he wanted to match them, and that was his example, and, and, uh, and to go for them. Whether they liked it or not, I don't know.